Since the last time Tammy Butler came to speak with us, she introduced us to the idea of spoon bending at the very end, the idea of being, being able to affect matter with the intent of our consciousness. Well, you know, being who I am, I decided to try it for myself, and uh, to my surprise, I actually did get some results, which you can see there. The spoon is clearly bent. Now, what does that mean? Because Obviously, I had to take a skeptical approach to it, as we all should. Now, you know, I, I was doing it, I was, I, I was developing my own patterns for it, and I had this idea of breaking it down to three steps. Step one, target, step two, command, and step three, to let go. And it was pretty cool because, as you can see, like, it actually did work. Now, how much of this is just, you know, the spoon conducting and, and, and actually gathering heat from my hands and becoming malleable, and then me physically having to turn it? Well, I, this wasn't my first attempt, this is like my second or third, and, and, and what kind of validated something for me was the idea that I had tried it a few days later, and I actually wasn't able to do it. So the fact that I wasn't able to do it a few days later, and the fact that I was able to do it previously, like, w what does that mean? Because, I mean, if I, if I was just using my muscles, then theoretically I should have been able to do it both times. But the second time that I wasn't able to do it, I knew that my mind wasn't really in the right state. I was having trouble meditating and getting myself into that state of being able to let go. And as a result, I couldn't bend the spoon. Whereas here, it's clearly shown that I was capable of bending the spoon. It's just something to think about, really, and something that you can try for yourself. So look into spoon bending. But with the idea of spoon bending, that just kind of brings us into this whole idea again of energy. And we are energy. and We can connect with the energy around us and actually use our intent to either guide it or channel it or, or use it in many, many different ways. And one of the interesting ways to use energy is energy healing. The practice known as Reiki is this idea of using universal life force energy to channel it through ourselves and to actually heal other people. We have my Reiki master, Paul Dugson, who is here this time to speak to us and explain to us a little bit about energy healing. You're watching Paradigm Shift, Sight Beyond Sight. So I'm Paul Dugson, and I'm a Reiki master in Isui Shiki Ryoho, which is the Isui system of natural healing. And Reiki means universal life energy. So I'm a Reiki master, and I've been practicing Reiki for 15 years. The Reiki practitioner channels universal life energy. It doesn't come from the practitioner or their field or their aura, and they're not doing anything to the field or aura of the other person, uh, manipulating it in any way. They just channel the universal life energy into that client and it does its thing with its own wisdom to the greater benefit of the, of the client. My path with Reiki what started when I was in university as well. Uh, I was uh, a physics student and um, I was looking for all sorts of um, information and and I was on my own personal journey. I was in physics as part of that as well because um, I wanted to understand the nature of the universe and the physics w is a very fundamental science that is set up to do that. Uh, when you really get into physics and you really actually work out um, and use equations that describe quantum mechanics and uncertainty and some of these things you really under and un really understand what they mean uh, it changes your perception of the universe and for me that was actually emotionally quite uh, an event because I was looking for certainty and the nature of the universe is not I was a very purist kind of scientist uh, mentality and so um, even though I had had this experience that I just told you about in physics, I was very skeptical. It takes um, three days to receive your level one or your first degree. Um, but in that time, your hands get initiated and you, you learn the form of the treatment. And Reiki is really an experiential process. It's not a 
an academic exercise that comes down in an oral tradition, so it's transmitted uh, very clearly and very simply. The people that were my fellow students were actually having effects right in, in the course from my hands. So that was uh, certainly an important event. So something really was happening, and it was from something that I was not um, able to see or touch. As I went through the course, though, I found that my hands, my my hands would feel hot. Um, my whoever I was practicing on experienced heat coming from my hands that was not normal heat. So people come for Reiki treatments that present with acute symptoms, um, like cuts or wounds or burns that that benefit from Reiki. Uh, it's used in post-surgical recovery units. It's used to treat chronic diseases and ailments. It's used to um, to integrate people that are having problems at various levels or areas of their being, mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, all at the same time. Most people fall asleep within a short while of the session starting and then they go into kind of a deeper state of of consciousness. Uh, m many people had either some relief from acute symptoms or they had stuff come up uh, from latent or longer term issues. You do surgery, you know what you're cutting apart and removing or stitching back together again. There's a mechanical kind of relationship. There wasn't a relationship other than the fact that my hands were on or my hands were off you know, that something was happening. Being a bit scientific about this, I, I, I was curious and I set up a studio and I started to, to practice Reiki and have clients and so on. And, and though the effect, like I said, was never linear, in other words, somebody might come in complaining of a headache and, and yes, they might have a direct relief from that, Maybe something would, they would have a pain come up in their knee. Why would they, well, think back, have you had an injury? Oh yes, 10 years ago I had a ski injury and we never, I never bothered to get it fixed. Or something, you know, things like that would happen. As a Reiki practitioner, we're actually not, uh, we, we actually don't um, diagnose. We don't control the energy. It's not even our energy. It's, we're channeling universal life energy into the client. And it takes its own course and does its own thing. And uh, it has its own wisdom. And yet, the pattern, the signature with which it works, is recognizable. After 15 years of doing it, I, there's an unfolding quality. It, and, and layers of effect happen as you practice Reiki on a person who comes to you regularly or on yourself. It's like peeling back layers of an onion and and yet then it transforms into a new whole onion at another layer, you know, another whole quantum. So, uh, and then again and again, just kind of like the universe itself, I think. It's also used uh, by advanced uh, practitioners of Reiki to treat people non-locally, in other words, in other countries at different times and so on. It's common sense to think that one thing cannot be in two places at the same time. But how can I have an effect, how can I have an effect on you if you're in China? But I can uh, through this particular channeling. There are a lot of trials and lots of double-blind and triple-blind studies that have been used in Reiki, and you can pull it up on the, on the online medical journals and nursing journals and so on. There's been lots of studies done, but the actual mechanism by which it's being done is not yet explained. The only thing you can, you can use to explain it is that we're, we're more than just matter. Uh, we're both matter and energy, and uh, Reiki comes into the body as, as energy and, and works from that end of the spectrum down into, into the physical. I think that a fulfilled life is also one that comes from 
uh, being able to, to live in a feeling of alignment or integrity with what is considered, what, whatever one considers the divine. That isn't a Reiki statement as such, but I think that as we, as we heal and we move along our journey towards greater fulfillment, uh, Reiki can help in that respect. The best way to, to experience this yourself is to have a Reiki treatment. I do energy healing, uh, actually. I've been practicing it for about two and a half years. I think when I was about uh, 16 or 17, I uh, had a session from a Reiki master. Ever since then, like, I've uh, been searching, like, uh, searching for, like, s spiritual truth. I think like, everyone has psychic and spiritual abilities that are dormant within us, and we just have to, like, like find a way to, like, like, like awaken that and sort of, sort of reclaim the power that we uh, all, that, that, that is just lying within each of us. One thing that I found was really interesting about the, uh, the presentation was the uh, tangible sensations he was talking about. Like a lot nowadays people don't realize that like once you start to explore something uh, a lot that you start to have these physical or like audible uh, manifestations. Like you start to feel the heat coming off your hand and you feel like the vibrations uh, through meditation. Like I sometimes I can have like some interesting visualizations or physical manifestations and like uh, I guess that would be like further proof for some people that are really skeptic that like these kind of things do exist and uh, it just depends on how much time you're willing to sink into it and, and how deep you want to look into it like how far you want to go down the rabbit hole I guess. The human body is really an amazing thing. It's equally as amazing as everything else around us, but one of the particular things that Reiki kind of reassures us is that the human body has this ability to heal itself. There's a lot that we can benefit when we choose to look inwards as a means to heal ourselves, and whether that be through meditation or opening our chakras or hands-on healing, there's just so much that we can learn about ourselves that we can learn by choosing to look inwards and then taking that experience and applying it to the external world around us. I mean, at the very least, all you can do is choose a path for yourself and have fun doing it. I mean, that's what life is all about. It's about experiencing, growing, and enjoying the ride. This is Paradigm Shift, Sight Beyond Sight.